Today's video is sponsored by Underlucky Stars, a very cool sponsorship that makes beautiful personalized star maps that show the unique alignment of the stars from a specific place and time chosen by you. Now, this is the original map maker for stars with a proprietary method of mapping the stars in the universe verified by astrophysicists from NASA so you know you're getting the real deal. How does it work? Well, all you have to do is enter a location, a date, and a time of a special moment in your life to you want, that you want to commemorate, maybe a birthday, anniversary, a wedding, or in my case, the birth of my daughter, which I uh, got made. It's a big reflection of me in my light. Uh, there we go. That looks about right. And uh, yeah, beautifully framed up in this thing. And here are the stars above where she was born at the exact time. So I think this looks fantastic. I had one done previously for my wedding. It's printed on museum quality matte art paper, and there are more than 15 designs and six different frame options to choose from, which means you can create a totally personalized memento. That is for her birthday at the end of this month. Additionally, by supporting Under Lucky Stars, you'll also be helping to keep our skies clear and limit space litter through their support for the International Dark Sky Association. Right now, there's a Black Friday sale you guys can take advantage of. Just go to underluckystars.com forward slash megaprojects and you'll get an additional 10% off the cost of your personalized gift experience. Again, underluckystars.com slash megaprojects. Use the code megaprojects to get your loved one a gift they'll never forget. And now today's video. Where do you want to go on your next vacation? A relaxing beach, maybe a tranquil mountain ski resort, or have you considered outer space? If Richard Branson and the rest of the team of Virgin Galactic have their way, that will soon be a very real possibility. With headquarters in Mojave, California and operations centralized in New Mexico, Virgin Galactic has been developing its fleet of private spacecraft since 2004. Now with a growing fleet of operational spacecraft in addition to various other aircraft, the company hopes to reach their space tourism goals as early as 2023. While getting to this point has involved plenty of impressive engineering feats, not all landings have been soft. So, are outer space getaways really going to be the next big thing? These days, most people recognize the name Richard Branson. The 72-year-old business magnate who was even knighted by the king, then Prince Charles in 2000, is famous for his venture capital conglomerate Virgin Group, which owns large stakes in companies serving sectors from books to jewelry. Branson actually started his entrepreneurial career trying to sell Christmas trees and parakeets, but both those ventures failed. His first successful business was a magazine titled Students, which launched in 1967 when he was 15 years old. In 1970, he and friend Nick Powell then started Virgin Mail Order, a company that sold records by mail through students. They decided to call the company Virgins, since they considered themselves virgins in business. A year later, in 1971, Virgin evolved into a full brick-and-mortar record store located on Oxford Street in London. Eventually, they even opened a recording studio. By 1979, Branson's net worth was £5 million, and he decided to branch out of the music industry. Most notably, he started the Virgin Atlantic Airline in 1984, and then Virgin Rail Group after the privatization of British Rail in the 1990s. Branson was even one of the first to foray into the cell phone telecom market with Virgin Mobile in 1999. However, Branson's arguably most ambitious venture came in 2004 when he formed Virgin Galactic as a space tourism company. The original plan was to sell tickets to passengers for Spaceship One, a suborbital spacecraft developed by Bert Rutan, the aerospace engineer responsible for Voyager, the first aircraft to fly around the world without refueling. Together, they formed the Spaceship Company, with Virgin Group owning 70% and Rutan's company Scaled Composites owning 30%. Beyond Spaceship One, the Spaceship Company also planned to build five Spaceship Twos based upon the same design as well as two White Knight II motherships serving as launch platforms for the spaceships. Virgin Galactic is to license the ships and operate the tours with an exclusive contract for the initial 18 months of commercial passenger operations. At first, things went pretty smoothly, and by 2006, Branson was ranked the ninth wealthiest person in the UK with a net worth of over £3 billion. That same year, he was quoted as saying that he wanted to make space travel affordable and fun, and that in two years, Virgin Galactic would start to take ordinary people into space. Unfortunately, things didn't turn out that way, because disaster is around the corner.
On July the 26th, 2007, Seattle Composites began a test on a rocket propellant flow system for Spaceship 2 at Mojave Air and Spaceport in Southern California. Scaled Composites hoped to use a fuel system made of solid rubber, which would be oxidized by nitrous oxide. Consequently, the test involved transferring nitrous oxide from a transport tank to the tank mounted on the test stand. After moving the nitrous oxide, the 11 workers involved went behind a chain link fence only 12 yards away to watch the test. Without warning, the nitrous oxide suddenly exploded, killing two of the workers instantly and severely injuring four more, one of whom died in surgery at the hospital. The explosion threw debris hundreds of yards. The California Occupational Safety and Health Administration ended up fining scaled composites for five safety violations, and while they initially continued working with the spaceship company on numerous prototypes, they ultimately went their separate ways. In 2012, Northrop Grumman acquired full ownership of scaled composites, and Virgin Galactic bought out their 30% stake in the company. Nevertheless, Richard Branson and Virgin Galactic remained optimistic, in part due to a major investment of $300 million by the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Abu Dhabi, Abar Investments, which gave them nearly 40% ownership of the company. In December 2009, despite setbacks, Virgin Galactic revealed Spaceship 2 at the Mojave Air and Space Port to an audience of 300, all of whom had paid $200,000 to reserve a ride on it. Branson told them that these rides would begin in 2011, but when the time came, he announced another 18 months of delays. Through 2014, Spaceship 2 and the White Knight 2 launch vehicle performed a number of successful tests, but continued to fall short of the 70 seconds at 2,500 miles per hour, or about 4,000 kilometers per hour, that had been determined as necessary to carry six passengers into space. By that September, Branson was still stating that commercial flights were just six months away, even though Spaceship 2's most successful test had only flown at an altitude of 13 miles or 21 kilometers, a far cry from the 62 miles or 100 kilometers required by the Federal Aviation Administration to carry passengers into space. Virgin Galactic's clientele began to get restless. Prospective passengers had paid around $80 million in fares and reservations, and of course, no one had yet gone to space. It was under this pressure that the company faced its next big setback. On Halloween 2014, Virgin Galactic initiated the 50th test flight of Spaceship 2 VSS Enterprise piloted by Peter Seibold and Michael Ellsbury. The VMSE, the White Knight 2 launching craft, took off from the Mojave Air and Spaceport carrying Enterprise. At altitude, Enterprise dropped from Eve and ignited its hybrid rocket engine. Everything appeared normal at first, but after 11 seconds, the spacecraft suddenly exploded, creating a debris field 35 miles or 55 kilometers long. Michael Asbury died in the crash, while Peter Seibold, who was able to parachute out, was seriously injured but managed to survive after hospitalization. Due to incorrect deployments of the ship's air braking descent device, the crash represented the first fatality on a spacecraft in flight since the Space Shuttle Columbia broke up during atmospheric re entry in 2003. Government, media, and public response was widely negative. Organizations such as the International Association for the Advancement of Space Safety criticized Virgin Galactic for their poor safety procedures and lack of transparency. Journalists with Time and the Wall Street Journal did extensive pieces analyzing Virgin Galactic's unsafe practices and calling out Branson. After the crash, Virgin Galactic's head of operations, Michael Moses, implied that Richard Branson's continuous short-term predictions for commercial viability created pressure for the engineering team and tension within the company. CEO George D. Whitesides was quoted as saying, Space is hard, and today was a tough day. After the VSS Enterprise disaster, Richard Branson's response was characteristically more optimistic. While he reiterated his CEO's sentiments, he added his own addendum. Space is hard, he said. Worth it. He also said that Virgin Galactic would learn from what went wrong and continue moving forward. By early 2016, Virgin Galactic had already replaced Enterprise with VSS Unity and other spaceship too. It took its first successful glide flight that December and its first powered flight in April 2018. It performed much better than Enterprise, and in December 2018, it reached an altitude of 51 miles or 82 kilometers, enough to earn the pilots Mark Starkey and Frederick Sturkow commercial astronaut wings from the US government since NASA defined space as 50 miles above the surface. 
Then, in February 2019, Unity carried a single passenger in addition to its pilots. The first time a Virgin Galactic spacecraft had done so. Finally, on July 11, 2021, Unity's 22nd flight made headlines. Piloted by David McKay and Michael Masucci, then launched from Spaceport America in New Mexico. It reached an apogee of 53.5 miles, or roughly 86 kilometers, making it the first space flight, by the NASA definition, to carry more than one non-pilot passenger. More importantly, one of its four passengers was Richard Branson himself, making it the first time a commercial space flight company's founder had gone into space in his own company spacecraft. This was a major milestone in what was dubbed the billionaire space race. Branson beat out Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos, who completed the same feat aboard the RSS First Step just 19 days later, on the 20th of July 2021. With things looking up, Virgin Galactic reopened ticket sales in February 2022 with hopes to be operating three launches per month starting at some point in 2023. So, does the current status truly warrant that optimism? Despite the accidents, Virgin Galactic's fleet continues to grow. The main spacecraft is currently the Spaceship 2 VSS Unity, which can reach 2,600 miles per hour or 4,200 kilometers per hour on a single hybrid rocket engine called Rocket Motor 2. Unity launches from a mothership, White Knight 2, at an altitude of 49,000 feet, which is about 15 kilometers up. Virgin Galactic currently has one White Knight 2, VMS Eve, built in 2008. On top of that, though, Virgin Galactic is now working on Spaceship 3, a full production version of Spaceship 2. This class of spacecraft is designed to provide a few minutes of weightlessness and views for paying passengers. One model, the VSS Imagine, is already finished, though it hasn't performed any test flight yet. Another, the VSS Inspire, is currently under construction. So, does that seem like enough for regular launches starting in 2023? Even according to Richard Branson's own mother, Eve, it seems like Virgin Galactic is perpetually scheduled to be operational by the end of the year. Nevertheless, if you're interested in the great beyond for your next vacation, you can get in line behind over 700 other people who have reserved seats. Just make sure that you start saving now, because tickets start at $450,000.